Welcome to Worship Online. We are so glad that you are joining us today as we wrap up our Unstoppable Sermon Series. Pastor Amy's got a great message for us today, a word of uh, encouragement and hope for all of us in the midst of uh, the chaos and the turmoil and, and all the things that all of us are facing every single day. So get ready for that. Uh, quick thing, uh, if you're joining us online and you've never been to our church physically, I just want to say that you are just as much a part of our church family as anybody else and we would love to connect with you. So I encourage you to go to fclc.org slash connect fill out a connect card uh, so we can get your information and send you all kinds of uh, info about the amazing stuff that God is doing at Faith Community and how you can get plugged in to our church here. So again, let's get ready to worship. Uh, hope you came with an expected heart because I believe that God has something awesome in store for each of us today. Well, hello, Faith Community. We are glad that you are joining us online whenever you are watching this, wherever you are watching us. Welcome. Uh, we want you to sing along, sing loud and proud, especially if you're by yourself. Uh, you have the opportunity to uh, sing as loud as you want, even if you're not very good. So here we are. We're singing together. Let's sing Unstoppable God. Let's sing it. that we've uh, that we're finishing up our unstoppable series and we've kind of used this unstoppable God song as a kind of a theme song throughout this series and I think it's been an awesome way to be able to focus in on what the story of Acts is all about and it's fascinating to be able to look at the overarching story and know that at the end of the day we can see that we do have an unstoppable God that throughout all of the chaos throughout the the amazing struggles that Paul went through, that God still was faithful, that God showed up, that his church was built regardless of the circumstances. And so uh, we want to finish off this series with singing this song, starting off with it. Um, and I love this bridge, nothing shall be impossible. Uh, and it's, it's true. As we look in Acts, we see that truth ring true. So let's sing these together. Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible, your kingdom reigns unstoppable, we'll shout your praise forevermore, Jesus our God unstoppable, nothing shall be impossible, your kingdom reigns unstoppable, we'll shout your praise forevermore, Jesus our God unstoppable. 
so extremely grateful for your faithfulness, for the steadfast love and grace that you have poured upon us. And there's no greater proof than that than when we look at the story um, that is written in Scripture. And as we've gone through Acts, like we can see, we can see truly that your faithfulness has always been good, that you have always been there, that even from the very beginning, you you walked with Paul and the, the beginning church leaders and you, you built your church. And the kingdom of God is, is here, it is now, it's always been here. But you, you built the church and through the struggles, through the chaos, you are always there. And that is true for our own lives and especially true for us now um, and important for us to be able to hear. And God, I just pray that you would remind us of that. You would send your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts wherever we find ourselves watching this right now that as we've engaged in worship, as we've, as we've taken our, sel- our second to be away uh, from the chaos of the world, that you would send your spirit to, to move in us, to feel peace, to feel rest, and to know that no matter what comes our way, that we have a good God that is standing with us. So Lord, we give you this time, we give you our worship, we give you the words that you've prepped on Pastor Amy's hearts this, work, or this, this week. Um, I just pray that you would work through them, that it would not fall on deaf ears. We love you, Jesus, and we give you all the praise. Amen. Max Lucado is such a great storyteller, and in his book, In the Eye of the Storm, he talks about a trip that he took uh, during high school, and he talked about how every year his family over spring break would go fishing, and so this year that he's talking about, his brother and his mom couldn't go, so his dad told him he could invite a friend, and so he was so excited to be able to have this friend come along, and they were dreaming about it and talking about it and just anticipating how awesome this trip was going to be, and they had in their minds this picture of this sun shining and being out on the lake and how the rod would feel when the fish were biting and bringing all those fish in to the boat and uh, then smelling that fish cooking over this open fire and so they were so excited and finally the time came to load up the camper and to head out and so they arrived at night they got everything set up and they went to bed dreaming about fishing well when they woke up the next morning a northeaster had blown in and so the wind was so strong that they were barely able to get the door to the camper open. The wind was blowing so strongly that the lake was super choppy and there was no way that they were going to be able to go out and fish that day. No problem, they said. They could stay in the camper. They brought Monopoly. They had a few things to read. They surely had some jokes that they could share with each other. And so they really tried to make the best of that day. Finally, night came and they went to bed again, crawling in their sleeping bags um, with this anticipation again of the next day and dreaming about fishing. So the next morning arrives and it wasn't the wind that made it hard to open the door to the camper. It was the ice. And so again, 
again that day, they tried to be cheerful. No problem, we can play Monopoly again. We can tell jokes again. Surely we can trade around our reading and find a way to spend the day. But they weren't really very cheerful about it. So as the day went on, they got more irritable and edgy. It felt like a long day. When night came, they were anxious to get into their sleeping bags and to go to sleep so that next day would come. And they again dreamed of fishing and being out on the lake. When they woke up, though, the next morning, they woke up to the sound of sleet hitting the camper. That day, they sat in misery the whole day. Their fishing equipment sat there still unpacked. Have you ever felt like that, that they're just a storm after storm after storm, that you have these plans and yet life throws these detours after detour after detour at you? Actually, I think 2020 might feel like that for a lot of us. Well, Max, ta Max talks about how the next day then it was even colder and so they finally headed home. And he says, you know, I learned an important lesson that week, not about fishing, but about people. He said, when those those who are called to fish don't fish, they fight. Instead of casting nets, we cast stones. Instead of being fishers of the lost, we become critics of the saved. And so this week, as we come to Acts 27 and 28, Paul could have sat in misery. Paul could have cast stones at the people around him. But instead, he continues to fish for people and to cast nets instead of stones. Paul had been through a lot. All of the storms and the shipwreck, he relies on God and God's faithfulness. And so in chapters 27 and 28, again this week, we see that God is unstoppable. In the midst of all of the storms, even in the midst of a, st of a shipwreck, that God is unstoppable. He remains faithful and the gospel continues to go out. All that we've seen throughout Acts, we have seen over and over again that God is faithful. Paul has faced many storms as we've walked through the book of Acts and we come to these final chapters. And here we're going to see that he's even shipwrecked. A little bit later on in 2 Corinthians, Paul says this, We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Rely not on ourselves, but on God. God who is faithful. And we see that with Paul as we come to these chapters. So uh, I would invite you to turn to your Bibles or your Bible apps and let's look at some of this in chapter 27. We see as the chapter gets started here that they are going to sail for Italy, um, hopefully heading for Rome. And in uh, verse 2 we see that they go ahead and they put out to sea. And then as we continue through here then in verse 4, we see that the winds were against them, that they uh, were, uh, a, actually they end up changing ships even here because the winds are, are against them. But as we continue, things don't get easier there either. As we get to verse 7, it says, the wind did not allow us to hold our course. And so uh, they're, they're forced by the winds to go in a direction that they had not planned on. So Paul then, if you look at verse 9, it says he warns them. He says, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous. Disastrous is the word that he, he uses there, but they don't listen to him. And so as we continue then in here, we see um, that they finally, in verse 13, get a gentle south wind, and they thought that they had then what they wanted. Have you ever felt that too? You're in the midst of all these storms and these winds blowing, and then this quiet comes, and you think that you are in a good place. But if you uh, continue reading here, in chapter 27, we see then as we come to verse 14 that this northeaster swept down from the island. And so again, they have these huge hurricane force winds. So much so that if you look at verse 17, it says uh, they passed ropes under the ship itself to hold it together. These were some serious winds that they were facing. So then they, in verse 18, begin to even throw the cargo overboard. You see that at the end of that verse. 
And yet, we see here uh, that God is faithful because then in verse 21, Paul stands up and he talks to them. Um, and so he says in verse 22, but now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. That Paul trusts in God here, and we see in verse 25 then, he says, so keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Listen to those words. Keep up your courage, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as you told me. It's another great verse to underline, to highlight, to hold on to, for us to say those same words to each other, that I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Paul, we see here, standing, trusting God. He knows that God is faithful, faithful in his promises. And there are so many promises that God gives us. Last week, Lucas did an awesome job preaching on the peace that God offers us, that God is faithful in offering us his peace. In Romans 8, it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God is faithful. He works for your good in all things. Things. Another promise that Isaiah that uh, God gives in Isaiah. I love these verses. Um, in in forty one, it says, "So do not fear." God says, "For I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you." and help you. Do you hear that promise? I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then in Matthew at the end, we hear him say too, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age, that God promises to be present with us. And in all of these promises, God is faithful. Think about all of the things that Paul has endured, even in just these most recent chapters right? His brothers and sisters in Christ tell him to not go to Jerusalem. But Paul believes that God is calling him there, and so he goes anyway. But after even just a week there, he began to experience persecution. He was almost killed there. Then he spends time locked up in prison, and he appeals to Caesar. Uh, and the prisoners then are put on this ship, as we read about in chapter 27 and 28. And they hit this huge storm with these hurricane force gales, uh, which then we'll see in a minute here, followed by a shipwreck. And yet in all of that, Paul trusted God's faithfulness. Paul had storm after storm after storm, and in all of it, he trusted that God is faithful. A rescue crew tells a story of a shipwreck one night uh, caused by some of those nasty winds. And there was a boy on the ship who was taken away by the waves. And he eventually came to rest on a rock. He stayed on the rock all night, shivering in that cold storm. And the rescue crew found him the next morning. And they said, weren't you scared? Didn't your fear cause you to tremble? And the boy said, yeah, I was scared. I actually, I shook all night long, but the rock didn't. God's faithfulness is rock solid. Actually, it's even stronger than that. It will never waver or shake. God is faithful. And we continue to see that through chapter 27 and 28. So let's look through this a little bit more. We come to verse 27, we're coming to the part of the shipwreck of the story, and we see uh, the beginning of verse 27 there, it talks about the 14th night they were still being driven across the sea, the 14th night, and it tells a little bit more of that story, and when we come down to verse 39, it says they saw a bay with a sandy beach, and so they finally see land, and yet um, in verse 41 there, it says then, but the ship's struck a sandbar and ran aground. The bow stuck fast and would not move, and the stern was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. But then in verse um, 
43, we see they're trying to make it safely to shore, and the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life. And so through that then, all of the people on board are saved and are able to uh, safely get to shore, and their lives are spared. As it says at the end of verse 44, everyone reached land in safety. God's faithfulness again. God is faithful, and there is nothing that will shake that or rock that at all, that God is faithful. And so then as we get to uh, chapter 28 and we start walking through there, we see um, God's faithfulness too in the islanders who, verse 2, it says, showed us an unusual kindness that God works through the people of the island to show his faithfulness to. And in that, verse 3, we see this viper attack Paul, and he's able to shake it from him, and they're amazed uh, that Paul's life is spared in that. And we yet again see God's faithfulness. Drop down a little further into verse 14. And so Paul has been trying to get to Rome over and over and over again. And so here we see in, in verse 14, and so we came to Rome. Rome. And so finally, Paul reaches this destination, and we see again God's faithfulness. Um, in verse 16, it says, when we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with a soldier to guard him. So Paul is still under arrest, and yet, um, let's look at this next verse, because we see that God is unstoppable, and that he is so faithful in situations that we might consider impossible. So Paul isn't able to go out to the people. So look at verse 17. Three days later, he called together the leaders of the Jews, and they assembled. And Paul talks to them and teaches to them and preaches to them that God is unstoppable, that it would seem that the gospel would be stopped here, that Paul is basically under house arrest. How can he uh, continue to preach and share the gospel and the good news? And yet here we see God in his unstoppable way continuing to bring people to Paul so that he can share the good news. Paul trusts in God's faithfulness, and so then he is able to share over and over again the gospel with many people. Acts begins with this idea of witnessing and how the word is going to go out farther and farther and farther to the very ends of the earth. And so if you remember in chapter 1, that's kind of where Acts starts. And so let's turn to the end of Acts and let's look at the very final verse of Acts because we see that it ends with this same theme here then. So verse 31 Boldly and without hindrance, he preached the kingdom of God and taught them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul was always boldly sharing, regardless of where he was. He took every opportunity to share the gospel, and he would share it without hindrance and boldly. Al Bracca was a corporate bond trader, and his office was on the 105th floor of Tower One in the World Trade Center. So a week after that tower was hit and collapsed, they recovered his body in the rubble. So his wife was talking about him and how he hated his job, how he could not stand the environment that he worked at, that it was in this world that was completely out of sync with his Christian values, but he wouldn't quit because he was convinced that God wanted him to stay there, to be a light in the darkness. And so his family then learned that he had been ministering to people in this office that he worked at, even during the attack. And so there were these reports that kind of trickled out from friends and acquaintances through uh, calls that were made at the last minute as that tower was hit and emails that they had sent out. And they talked about this man that was leading people in prayer. Well, there were a few people who referred to Al by name. And when Al realized that they were trapped in that building, that they were in the midst of this nasty storm, he shared the gospel with a group of 50 of his co-workers and led them in prayer, that he shared without hindrance, boldly, with the people that God had around him in that moment, that he seized the opportunity, even in the midst of the storm, 
He relied on God's faithfulness, and he shared boldly and without hindrance the people that God had around him in that moment. So because of God's faithfulness, we can boldly and without hindrance share the gospel. There's a Chinese symbol for crisis, and it's actually identical to the word for opportunity. Literally translated, it reads, crisis is an opportunity riding the dangerous wind. Paul shares boldly and without hindrance at every opportunity that God gives him. He's pulled before this angry mob and he shares about Jesus. He has this audience before the governor and later the king and he shares about Jesus. He's on this island after he's shipwrecked in the middle of nowhere sharing the good news. And when he finally arrives in Rome, we find again that God is unstoppable. And even in difficult circumstances in the midst of yet another storm there, that God continues to send the gospel out through Paul. Paul takes every opportunity to share boldly and without hindrance wherever he is. And we've seen all through Acts that it's not without troubles or challenges. But in spite of those, Paul continues to share boldly and without hindrance. We see if you look at verse 24 here too in, in chapter 28 that some believed, but not everyone believed. And yet Paul knows that his call is to share the gospel. And that's true for us too, that not everyone is going to be receptive. And yet God continues to ask us and to invite us uh, to be on mission for him to share the gospel with whoever it is that he puts around us. Chuck Colson has a book, The Body, and in that book, he tells this great story of Murdy Howell. She was a deep Christian, but she had lived a really tough life from the very beginning. Her family was really poor, and so when she was 10, she was forced to quit school and go to work. She worked in a steel mill where she made 10 cents a day. She got married at 17, but just five years later, her husband was killed in an accident, and so she had to go back to work to support herself and the three kids. Over the years, her health declined, and eventually she had to move into an old high-rise nursing home for those that couldn't afford to be anywhere else. Within a couple weeks of moving in there, her youngest son, who was the baby of the family, died. So as you can imagine, sitting in her room, she fell into this deep depression. And she recalls praying, Lord, what more can I do for you? I've lost everything that meant anything to me. And now I'm stuck in this dark, dreary room. I have nothing left to live for. I want to die. I've had enough of this prison. Take me home. She said that God spoke to her in such a clear way that it was unmistakable. And what she heard him say to her was write to prisoners. Well, she didn't know exactly what that meant, but she set about to learn about it. So she wrote a letter, actually, and sent it to the Atlanta Penitentiary. And she wrote just a simple first letter. She said, Dear inmate, I'm a grandmother who loves and cares for you. I'm willing to be a friend. If you'd like to hear from me, write me. I will answer every letter you write. A Christian friend, Grandmother Howell. Well, the letter arrived at the prison. It was given to the chaplain, and so he then sent her names of eight prisoners that she could write to. Later, she got even more names from prison fellowship. So soon, she was writing up to 40 letters a day to prisoners all over the United States. And she later said, I thought my life was over, but these past few years have been the most fulfilling years of my life. She went from believing she was hindered to being unhindered, that she could boldly and without hindrance share and form a relationship with these prisoners where then she was able to share about the love and the grace of God. Paul, too, could have been hindered by his circumstances, the storms and the shipwreck and all of the things that he went through. And yet he trusted in God's faithfulness that wherever he was and whoever God had around him, he would boldly and without hindrance share the gospel. What is it that hinders you from sharing? 
Is it fear? Is it just not feeling like you know what to say, that you don't have something to share? There's many reasons that we can give that we see as hindrances. Maybe like this grandmother, you feel like your circumstances are a hindrance. And yet we see Paul as he allows God in his faithfulness to work that those hindrances fall away and Paul becomes unhindered and is able to boldly share the gospel. There are challenges and storms, no doubt. And yet even in that, we can boldly and without hindrance share the love and the grace of God. Whatever storms you're facing, whether it's in your relationships, whether it's your finances, your health, whatever it might be, maybe you actually feel like you're shipwrecked at this point in life. Know that God is unstoppable. In the midst of the storms and the shipwrecks, God remains faithful, and we can boldly and without hindrance share the gospel with others. Music, I think, is so powerful, and God moves in a special way through music. And so today we're going to sing about how great is thy faithfulness. Um, so as we sing today, uh, following a time of prayer and communion, we'd encourage you to allow those words to fall into your heart. Allow the music to speak to you and move through you. Listen to the words that you are singing today. Um, following that, we're going to sing Not Afraid. And I just want you to hear some of these words, and then as we sing it, it, allow those words to just wash over you. I have seen this confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God, the still inside the storm, the promise of the shore. I trust the power of your word enough to seek your kingdom first, beyond the barren place, beyond the ocean waves. When I walk through the waters, I won't be overcome. When I go through the rivers, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. You keep Keep the promises you make. There isn't one that is delayed. So I will not lose heart. Here I will lift my arms and start to sing into the night. My praise will call the sun to rise. Declare the battle won. Declare that it is done. Before me, behind me, always beside me. No, I am not afraid. We continue to see as we wrap up this series that God is unstoppable. In midst of the storms and even a shipwreck, God remains faithful. And because of God's faithfulness, we can boldly and without hindrance share the good news. Let's pray. God, we thank you today and praise you for your faithfulness. Uh, walking through uh, the book of Acts um, with Peter and with Paul, just seeing over and over again how you show your faithfulness. And so thank you for these final chapters, 27 and 8, 28, where we see this intense time of storms and a shipwreck uh, and imprisonment and all of those pieces, how we continue to see the gospel going out, that you truly are are unstoppable and it doesn't matter what storms or shipwrecks uh, happens in our life that you continue to be unstoppable and that you are faithful in that with your promises of your peace and your presence and your strength and the way that you can work for our good in all things and so uh, we thank you for that final verse too I pray that you would write it on our hearts that we could alongside Paul be able to share you and your grace and your love and your mercy boldly and without without any hindrances um, to be able to take that news to our neighbors and our co-workers and our friends and our family that you would continue to open our eyes to those opportunities and so we praise you today god our unstoppable god it's so with great thanksgiving and gratitude we pray in the powerful name of jesus amen so we prepare our hearts for communion today. Let's pray using the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
We remember that it was on the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And then after supper, he took the cup and he again gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this also to remember me. We'd invite you now to take some time to share communion and then spend some time in prayer. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have need. Thy end hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in Forces above join with old nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. I see all I have needed, thy end hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon 
for sin and a peace that endureth thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings oh mine with ten thousand behind great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness Lord on confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God is still inside the storm the promise of the shore I trust the power of your word enough to seek your kingdom first beyond the barren on the ocean waves When I walk through the waters I won't be overcome When I go through the river I will not be drowned My God will make a way So I am not afraid Promises away. There isn't one place to lay. So I will not lose heart. Here I will lift my arms and start to sing into the night. My praise will call the sun to rise, declare the battle. When I go through the rivers, I will not be 
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Hey, I want to spread the word on our youth ministry. As you know, we've been blessed with a strong youth, youth ministry through the years. And what a joy the last couple Sunday nights to see nearly 40 kids gathered for Fire Up on Sunday Night Youth Group. So if your kids haven't had a chance to join us, if you have any kids that in your neighborhood or amongst your friends, spread the word. We'd love to have them join us on Sunday nights. Also, you notice it's pretty hazy today, so let's keep the firefighters in our prayers this week as we pray for their safety and their mission. As we go from worship today, we go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a great week.